Get ready for Post at Home. On today's show, grab that dough. This actor and author was just as famous for playing a game show host as he was for hosting game shows. He can do it all. He's Jim McCrell. And now, here's your host who interviews the host. Adam Wurzel. Thank you, Richard Malmus. Thanks, everybody. Hello, I'm Adam Wurzel. Welcome to Hosts at Home. You know by now, this is the show where we talk to some of the greatest television hosts in history from the comfort of their very own home. And today, this man, he hosted game shows like The Game Game and Celebrity Sweepstakes, but all generations know him because he was in shows like The Golden Girls. He was in movies like Teen Wolf and Gremlins. It's amazing. Jim McCrell, he's here. Hi, Jim. Thank you so much, Adam. I've looked forward to this. And we looked forward to having you. Before we get started and talk about your career, tell everybody where is home for you. Well, we live in a little village outside of Houston, Texas, called Oak Ridge North. Now, I've never seen Oak Ridge South. I don't think there is one. But Oak Ridge North, it's uh, about 30 miles north of Houston. Uh, across from one of our mainstays, the Woodlands, and um, that's it. We're in South Texas. Incidentally, we came back to Houston after Los Angeles because that's where I met my wife 61 years ago. 61. Uh, that deserves, I, I'm at just over five, so you definitely right. deserve a round of applause. Congratulations. What's the secret? Uh, her. <laughs> Right behind you, I see McCrell's Bar and Grill. What is McCrell's Bar and Grill? It was a thing that my wife had made for us uh, when we lived out in Sherman Oaks. There was a company that did that. And uh, it's not really, it was our house for a while, but it's not anymore. The wings are fantastic at McCrell's Bar and Grill. We'll oh, just... yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lots of conversation. You know, Jim, there's something really interesting about your last name. If you Google you, and even if you watch end credits of some of the shows you hosted, it's spelled differently than yes. MAC. So can you just put us all out of our misery? How do you spell yeah. McCrell? Correctly, it is M-A-C, capital K-R-E-L-L. -L. But when that's written out, people say mackerel. And, and uh, to avoid that, I would get credit as M-C-K-R-E-L-L. -L. So that was the, the gist of that. Um, like, like many of your game show counterparts, you got your start in radio. Did you always know Absolutely. you wanted to be in the entertainment business? I, I did, indeed. I started at a very young age. My dad was in radio in Little Rock, Arkansas, where I was born. And he was really a pioneer. He was in radio in the 30s and the early 40s. And uh, when I was five, he had a program on a radio station there called KLRA. And he had, it was a variety, kind of a country variety show. And so I made my debut at five, standing on a chair, reaching for the microphone and singing, You Are My Sunshine. So I was around radio all of my life. How did you get the first gig with Chuck Barris? Well, that that I uh, I was uh, my agent sent me over there to to audition for the announcer, uh, and uh, when I got there, Chuck looked at me and talked to me and decided I might make the host. And he said to me something very interesting, Adam. He said, "Would you be willing to do run-throughs and rehearsals right up to the pilot if I?" didn't make you the host at the last minute. And I thought, sure, I'll do that. I mean, it, you know, it's just a long interview. So I did the run-throughs and everything, and we got to, uh, it was shot at the old ABC uh, studio across from Capitol Records, which is was very famous studios. So I don't think it's there anymore. But anyway, I was there, I was there all in my little suit and, and had my, my hair combed, and uh, at the last minute, I turned to Chuck and said, uh, by the way, am I going to host the show? And he said, oh, yes, oh, yes. So I went on to do that. I've heard Chuck, Chuck could be a, a pretty crazy guy at times. Well, he was. He, he's, uh, he was. Uh, he was a lot of fun, but he was also off the wall. And uh, 
very demanding. And uh, uh, we did the show together, Game Game, which was really fun. From Hollywood, it's the Game Game. The game that reveals a little bit more about your favorite celebrities and yourself. You worked with a lot of legendary game show producers. Yeah. Shortly after the Game Game, you did a show called The Honeymoon Game. It was a pilot that actually aired on TV yeah. working with Jack Barry. Well, he was wonderful. And uh, I always had a, a soft spot in my heart for Jack because he was a consummate pro. I believe uh, that he was absolutely mistreated by the government. I think that uh, at that time, he and uh, his partner uh, were told by the network to get ratings. And I believe they were sponsored by Geritol. And the people at Geritol wanted ratings, and they didn't care how it came. Well, Jack and, and his partner, Dan Enright, did get the ratings, and uh, Jack treated 21 as if it were a show, not anything sacrosanct. Uh, it was a, a show. And so whatever he did on a show, if you do a, a, a episodic thing, what you write isn't true. And so he cast it uh, with, with people like Charles Van Doren. And then when the, the uh, came down on him, uh, I felt that NBC threw him to the wolves, he and Dan both, because they put all the blame on him and, and Geritol and, and NBC backed off and, and oh my goodness, what a bad boy we have. And I, re I really felt bad for Jack for that. But his career quickly came back because, I mean, yeah, well, he, Joker's was, Wild, Tic Tac Doe, so many yeah. big shows. And you mentioned to me beforehand, and, and I would love to talk about yeah. this, that your favorite game show you ever hosted never made air. Tell us about no, it this it was, for, it was for one of my very best friends, uh, Richard Reed. And Richard and his family have been close with us for a long time. My daughter worked for him. And he, we put together Richard's dream show called Split Decision. Man, I enjoyed it. I loved working with Richard. I, I, I talked to him all the time. And uh, we, we were great social friends. We we're business friends. And uh, he's just dynamite. And I loved that show. I had a great time doing that show. I'm really sorry it didn't sell. But we put it, presented it, uh, Adam, and you, you are aware of this, at a time when most of the shows on the air were very, very stable. So you're not going to cancel uh, Price. You're not going to cancel Family Feud. You're not going to cancel uh, Hollywood Squares or any of the shows on NBC at that time. And so it just didn't go. You mentioned the word stable. Now let's talk about staple, like horse racing staples, as in celebrity sweepstakes. Probably the biggest show... I, that was, that was, it was a really hard stretch, Jim. I tried to do the segue. Yeah, yeah, you did good. You yeah. did good. I like that a lot. Celebrity Sweepstakes had a daytime version. It had a nighttime version. Massive celebrities on this show. Tell us about that show and, and kind of the format. Because horse racing and a game show, that's kind of hard to do. Well, it, it was very innovative uh, from the original producer, Ralph Andrews, because the whole crux of the show was the fact that there were these keyboards uh, at every seat that the audience could set the odds. And that was legit. As they punched in, the audience set the odds for the panel on who would answer it correctly. And um, it worked really, really good. Uh, and uh, it was brand new because the audience, it really was live audience participation. And they got it right an awful lot of the time. These are the days when Celebrity Sweepstakes was on before there was, you know, people wearing earpieces to where you could instantly determine the amount of money yeah. that each one was worth. How did you keep track of all that? That wonderful invention of which we would not have television without, and that's cue cards. <laughs> I will tell you that there was one time because as the celebrities wrote down their answers, that was transferred to, to uh, machines that we had to keep in the back so that the uh, uh, producers can see what each one wrote down. And one of our problems was 
that many times uh, they would call on Carol and then they'd call on Dick Martin. Well, Lucy Ornes might be sitting there with something just dynamite written down and we didn't know to go back to her. So when Bert Sugarman started producing, uh, we decided, or he decided, that he would stand back there and if a, if a particular uh, artist had a, a, a really funny thing they wrote down, uh, he would hold up a sign and say, go to number three, number six, number four. Well, this one particular night that it all went awry, uh, <laughs> uh, Bert was back there and Tina Sinatra was one of our celebrities and I loved her. Oh, she was just so as we're going along, uh, uh, I called on whoever the, the contestant picked, went to another person there, and Bert's holding up number three, number three, which was Tina. And I said, oh, okay, before we go on, Tina, what did you write down? And she said, Jim, you don't want to know. And I said, oh, no, glib Mr. Host. Oh, no. I, here's how we play, Tina. I ask questions, you give answers. So tell me what you wrote down. She said, trust me, you don't want to know. And I said, oh, and Bert's holding three up, three up. And I said, okay, what did you write down, Tina? And she said, I wrote down blank you, except she spoke it out. I got a bowling ball caught in my throat and couldn't talk. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if they were covering. Bert was laughing his butt off and uh, Tina was laughing and the audience is just aghast. And I'm standing there with a camera pointing at me and I didn't know what to do. So I went, okay, we'll go on. That's all I could do. Everybody said yes, and we went on. Well, when it, when it aired, it aired with, uh, Tina, what did you write down? You really don't want to know, Jim. And then a shot of me, apoplectic. <laughs> and never explained it, but oh, God, was it, it embarrassing. But it's, it's funny. It makes a good story now. How did Bert know what the celebrity panelists said? Because weren't they writing down their answers and covering them yes. up? Yes, they wrote their answers down, and that, what, there were uh, readers, machines in the back. And so when they wrote down their answers, it went electronically to machines in the back for each of the contest, uh, celebrities. So you can see whatever they wrote down. What a show. I mean, what, how ahead of its time. Oh, yeah, it was. Of course, you have a huge, huge resume, Jim, not just uh, on the hosting side, but on the acting side. And there were even times where you acted as a game show host. It's time to play Grab That Dough with your host, Guy Corbin. If you see the episode, I ask hair and makeup to make up my hair like Wick Martindale did. <laughs> His hair still looks perfect. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Two of the biggest movies to come out of the 80s were Teen Wolf and Gremlins. You managed to be in both. Yes, thanks to Joe Dante, the director. I had a great time with that. When I was doing uh, The Howling, I went in to meet with Joe, and he said, uh, have you ever done television news? I said, no, but I know how to talk like one. I said, I've got this friend, and he's going to remain nameless, that was very big at CBS. And uh, when I was at KXOL in Fort Worth, I knew him very, very well, because he was one of our newsmen, uh, there in Fort Worth, and he went on later at CBS. And I said, he now, I said, when you talk to him, and he's at CBS, he talks like this. Good evening, this is CBS. And I said, when he's off the air and talking to you, he talks like this, just like he's in Fort Worth again. And so Joe loved that, and he wrote the scene where I'm in the bathroom, and it looks like I'm on camera. And I say, good evening, this is WKRT. Good evening, this is WKRT. And a few minutes later, Chris walks in and I go, oh. And I said, that little girl of yours is really something. <laughs> so whatever. But it got it in. And so when we went to the scene uh, that we're shooting where she turns into the wolf, we're, we're sitting there and I'm talking to the sports guy. And I'm talking like, I caught a bass the other day about this big. And so, hi, thank you, and welcome to sports. So 
Joe thought that was very funny. And it created Lou Landers, who ended up in the Gremlins. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, that's a funny story because it was a Steven Spielberg picture. And you don't get the script on Spielberg until you, you are in it. Uh, there's no advanced copy of that. And so my call there at Warner Brothers was at 1230. Well, when I got there, the cast and the crew had gone to lunch. And I walk into the set, and the only thing that's left standing on the set is the barroom scene with all the little gremlins. And so I, I, I didn't see anybody in the room, and I wanted to see one of the little gremlins. And I walked up, unbeknownst to me, the operator for that little gremlin was underneath fixing some hydraulics. And so as I get up close, about six inches away from the gremlin, he goes, <laughs> like that. I, I jumped back about eight feet. Joe and the cast and everybody was coming in and I was backing up like hell. I got out of there. <laughs> do, you, do you still have nightmares? Oh, yes, yes, I do, I do. But, about the gremlins, but it made me a big hero with my kids. You're still acting. You are, are still yeah. doing movies. There's this one out called Last Man Club. Tell everybody yeah, about that one. Last Man Club was a picture uh, that was directed by Bo Brinkman uh, and written by Bo. And uh, it's about three guys who were in the World War II Air Corps together. And uh, they were a crew on the B-17. And they signed a pact together when they were all young and in France. And they bought this magnum of champagne. And they were going to drink it when the last man was still alive. Well, I play the captain uh, of, of the airplane. And uh, I get this letter that my grandson shows me from this buddy, Barry Corbin, who is in Galveston, Texas, in the hospital and not expected to live. And he's calling on me to do the last man club thing. And uh, so we go and we pick up Morgan Shepard, who's one of our cast members, and Richard Real. And it's and it crossed the country with the police chasing us. It's a it's a fun picture. And the movie, I want to make sure everybody knows where to buy the movie. Is it available on Amazon or wherever you buy your movie? Amazon. Yes, it's it's Amazon. You can down and many people have downloaded it. it they enjoy it. I still love it. That's not the only work of yours you could buy on Amazon. Just when you think that Jim McCrell has done it all, you're also a published author. Tell us about oh, yes, the books. Well, I, I have a book down from the mountain. I, I love naps. And I was taking a nap, and this book played on a screen in my subconscious. And as I got to the end of it, I, I awoke and thought, that's a book. And I ran down to Kathy and I said, let me tell you this story. Um, and don't say a word until I get finished. And when I got finished telling her this story that I had just dreamed up, uh, she said, go write that down. So I went and wrote it down. And uh, I didn't, it's about a, a Australian shepherd in Montana that's a world famous sheepdog. And I knew nothing about Australian shepherds and I knew nothing about sheep. And I knew less about Montana. And I called this lady who was, I, I found out through the internet that she was a rancher there and she raised Australian shepherds and sheep and she lived in Montana. And I called her and told her what I wanted to do and asked if she and her husband, Walt, her name was Judy Manuel, if they would kind of be technical advisors for me. So I wrote the first chapter. I was so proud of it, Adam. And I sent it off to Judy. And I'm waiting, and my phone rings about a day later, and she says, Jim, this is Judy. And I said, hi, Judy. She said, we have a problem. Said, What's the problem? There aren't any mockingbirds in Montana. I had written this mockingbird flies out of this tree. The tree's not in Montana. But she and, and another lady named Ann Shope, who's a, a big-time AKC judge of Shepherds, uh, helped me through it technically, and and I loved it. I just loved that story. Did you ever think, you know, Paul McCartney has a story about when he wrote Yesterday that he heard the song in a dream, and he was convinced that the song had been done before. Did you ever have that issue where you thought, my gosh, I must have seen this, I must have read this? Yes, uh, I did wonder because it 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 
poured out of me. That's uh, when, when I was writing right here where I'm sitting at the keyboard. Uh, it, it just fit. It just worked. Uh, there was very little editing on it. It just came out. The dogs in your book are actual dogs oh, of yours. Yeah. Bandit, uh, the dog that I is in uh, down from the mountain, was an actual dog and a, probably one of the most prepotent sires within Australian Shepherds. Jim, that sound right there. You know what that means. That means, yes, it's time for the lightning round. This is what's going to happen, Jim. I'm going to name a show that you were involved with. All you need to do is tell us the first thing that comes to your mind, whether it's a memory, a funny blooper, anything at all, Jim. There's no rules. Are you ready, Jim? I'm ready. All right, first show, Quiz Kids. Young contestants and their host, Jim McCrell. Uh, done in Boston, loved it. And uh, it was just a great experience. How about Moonlighting? Moonlighting was, oh, how wonderful that was. How great the cast and the crew were. And Sybil was just wonderful. And Bruce was out of his mind. He was so good. And uh, it went awry later. They didn't like each other much later. But when we did the pilot, it was just the best. Ever. What about the time that you stepped in to the Twilight Zone? <laughs> now that you got it in there, what are you going to do with it? Oh. Oh, I always wanted to do that. I love the Twilight Zone. And to be able to look back at my age now and go, I did a Twilight Zone. It's really fun. How about working with Charles Nelson Riley on Sweethearts? Today on Sweethearts. That was, that was just wonderful. That was for my friend Richard Reed. And Richard said, why don't you announce? And I said, all right, I'll do that kept me busy on Saturdays, and Charles was just delightful. He, he was there being fussed over by hair and makeup, and finally he looked up at the hairdresser and said, stop it, it's not my hair. <laughs> Sounds like Charles. Yeah, he was great. He was How about the fact that you were on the most famous soap opera of all time, Dallas? Yeah, that was just a kick. And uh, everybody, we shot, of course, in Los Angeles. I didn't go to Dallas. They did that for exteriors. But it was really a fun thing to do. And again, you know, I did Dallas. It was fun. The list of hit shows keeps going on and on because you were also on The Love Boat. Love Boat. Oh, yes, that was great. My wife on The Love Boat was uh, Raquel Welch. And that's enough said. How did your real wife feel about that one? Oh, she was fine. She was fine. Jim, you have had such an incredible career, still going strong. Thank yeah. you so much for adding hosts at home to your credits. We truly appreciate having you here on the show. You made it so easy, Adam, and I appreciate it so very much. You're a very great talent, and I enjoyed being with you. Thank you, Jim. And by the way, if you like what you see, you know what to do. Please show us some love. Hit that subscribe button. It's red. You can't miss it. And please watch all of our other great episodes. Jim McCrell has been our guest here on Hosts at Home. My name is Adam Wurzel. By now, you know I don't close the show. That honor goes to this man. Jim, over to you. Thank you so much, Adam. And I really enjoyed this. And I hope that the folks at home enjoyed it as well. And they will hit that red button and subscribe because there are many of my friends, the hosts from game shows, that I have really enjoyed over the years. And you get me, get, need to get to know them better. So no better place to do it than host at home. Thank you and goodbye.